Section twenty three of Wessex Poems by Thomas Hardy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Libby Gone. Her Death and After. Twas a deathbed summons, and forth I went by way of the western wall so drear on that winter night and sought a gate, the home by fate of one I had long held dear. And there, as I passed by her tenement, and the trees shed on me their rhyme and hoar. I thought of the man who had left her lone, him who had made her his own, when I loved her long before. The rooms within had the piteous shine that home things wear when there's aught amiss. From the stairway floated the rise and fall of an infant's call whose birth had brought her to this. Her life was the price she would pay for that wine. For a child by the man she did not love, but let that rest for ever, I said, and bent my tread to the chamber up above. She took my hand in her thin white own, and smiled her thanks, though nigh too weak, and made them a sign to leave us there, then faltered ere she could bring herself to speak. Twas to see you before I go. He'll condone such a natural thing, now my time's not much, when death is so near, it hustles hence, all passion sense, between woman and man as such. My husband is absent, as heretofore the city detains him, but in truth he has not been kind, I will speak no blame, but the child is lame, oh, I pray she may reach his Ruth. Forgive past days, I can say no more. Maybe if we'd wedded you'd now repine. But I treated you ill, I was punished. Farewell. Truth shall I tell. Would the child's were yours and mine. But such my unease, that could I insert a deed back in time, I'd make her yours to secure your care, and the scandal bear, and the penalty for the crime. When I had left, the swinging trees rang above me, as lauding her candid say. Another was I. Her words were enough, came smooth, came rough. I felt I could live my day. Next night she died, and her obsequies in the field of tombs, by the via renowned, had her husband's heed. His tendance spent, I often went, and pondered by her mound. All that year and the next year wild, and I still went thitherward in the gloam, but the town forgot her and her nook, and her husband took another love to his home, and the rumour flew that the lame lone child whom she wished for its safety child of mine was treated ill when offspring came of the new-made dame and marked a more vigorous line. A smarter grief within me wrought than even at loss of her so dear, Dead the being, whose soul my soul suffused, Her child ill-used, I helpless to interfere. One evening, as I stood at my spot of thought, In the white-stoned garth, brooding thus her wrong, Her husband neared, and to shun his view By her hallowed mew, I went from the tombs among. To the cirque of the gladiators, Which faced that haggard mark of imperial Rome, whose pagan echoes mock the chime of our Christian time. It was void, and I inward clomb. Scarce night the sun's gold touch displaced from the vast rotund and the neighbouring dead, when her husband followed, bowed, half past, with lip upcast, then halting, solemnly said, It is noise that you visit my first wife's tomb. Now I gave her an honoured name to bear, while living, when dead. So I've claimed to ask, by what right you task my patience by vigiling there? There's decency even in death, I assume. Preserve it, sir, and keep away. For the mother of my firstborn you show mind undue. Sir, I've nothing more to say. A desperate stroke discerned I then. God pardon or pardon not the lie. She had sighed that she wished, lest the child should pine of slights t'were mine. So I said, But the father, I. 
that you thought it yours is the way of men but i won her troth long ere your day you learned how in dying she summoned me twas in fealty sir i've nothing more to say save that if you'll hand me my little maid i'll take her and rear her and spare you toil think it more than a friendly act none can i'm a lonely man while you've a large pot to boil if not and you'll put it to ball or blade to-night to-morrow night any when i'll meet you here but think of it and in season fit let me hear from you again well i went away hoping but not i heard of my stroke for the child till there greeted me a little voice that one day came to my window frame and babbled innocently my father who's not my own sends word i'm to stay here sir where i belong next a writing came since the child was the fruit of your lawless suit pray take her to right a wrong and i did and i gave the child my love and the child loved me and estranged us none but compunctions loomed for i'd harmed the dead by what i'd said for the good of the living one yet though god wot i am sinner enough and unworthy the woman who drew me so perhaps this wrong for her darling's good she forgives or would if only she could know end of section twenty three